first of all, guys, amazing job on this show. I, oh man, I had to stop watching it because if I, uh, if I continued any longer, I feel like I would spoil stuff in this interview. So uh, I got five, four episodes left and this show's amazing. Uh, Severance mixes uh, dark comedy, satire, sci-fi, and mystery all in a way that I haven't seen done before. Um, and John, we'll start with you. What attracted you to this story and this premise? I thought there was something organic about it. And I think, you know, people do separate themselves, you know, from work. Obviously, he's, Dan is taking it and been much further than that. And uh, I thought it was the characters were all different and nuanced. And uh, I liked the whole idea of the character that they, you know, had offered me. And I thought it would be interesting uh, to see someone who's really formal and, and disciplined and rigid. And then all of a sudden he gets uh, rocked, you know, right. and this wave of emotion comes in. And I, uh, you know, uh, and then when I spoke with Ben and Dan, we discussed it, I, they said, well, who would you like to, you know, work with on that? You know, would you have any ideas? And I said, Chris, because I've known Chris a long time and I don't have to really act. Right. Him, you know, and he's kind of like a jazz player. So, so there was all those elements. And then I got to meet, you know, Britt and Jack and Adam and, and, sort of, and uh, Tramel. It was really a, you know, terrific uh, group of people. So. It's amazing. Britt, when we meet Helly uh, in the first scene, in the first episode, we're kind of thrown in uh, just like Helly is. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about Helly and kind of what's going on with her at that time when she's thrown into that situation? Yeah, well, what struck me about Helly is that she wakes up on an office table having no memory of who she is or what she's doing there, and she's immediately defiant, rebellious, and she knows in her gut that something is off about this place and immediately wants to escape. Uh, and I, I love that, uh, you know, each episode she escalates those escape attempts and essentially becomes this disruptor of the office status quo and um, calls into question the nature of their work, what they're doing on the outside. And uh, I think all the characters kind of get rattled by Heli showing up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Zach, I always love Dylan's kind of theories on what their Audis are doing. Um, <laughs> Dylan is almost like Mark's little brother in this. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about Dylan and uh, and and his um, relationship with his coworkers? Yeah, I think you're right. He does sort of have a a brotherly relationship with with Mark and Irving, John's character, where you know they care about each other, but there's a lot of kind of competitiveness and like. Also, just a little bit of playful antagonism. They kind of get into it, especially when, you know, when Mark is in charge, he likes to give him a hard time about things like that. Um, and, and as you mentioned, he has all these theories about what may be going on outside the office, but I'm not sure he's super invested in their reality. It's just kind of like a fun way to kill time to be like, ooh, what if it was this? What if it was this? He's kind of like a, a conspiracy theory guy. Yeah, I think I would be the Dylan in the uh, in that situation there. Uh, now, John, talk to me about Irving because I really love this character a lot. What did you want to bring to the role of Irving that wasn't necessarily on the page? Well, Dan had a whole sort of uh, background of it, which I can't really speak about. Otherwise, I will be executed. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but it comes from a very disciplined and uh, regimented uh, world. So I thought it would be interesting, you know, to explore that. So I did a lot of uh, research on who that person would be on the outside, which helped me sort of then when he unravels later on, you know, when you see, uh, because they're all kind of reduced to this ch child state, you know, kindergarten state at, at right. moments, at moments. And so, uh, well, you're always looking for, you know, worlds maybe you haven't fully, you know, investigated or, or whatever. And, and then obviously it depends upon your interplay with your, your partners. They really help form your character. You know, you could think all these things, but if Britt does something or Zach does something to me, and that then I have to respond to that within that world. And that's what makes it, you know, interesting. So it really... It's also about what happens between the people. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Britt, um, you 
you are like Ben Stiller. He directs seven of the nine episodes. Um, can you talk to me about working with Ben as a collaborator? And I know that you're a basketball player and you kind of said that running down those halls and stopping at those marks felt kind of like you were on the court. Can you talk about that a little bit too? Yeah, well, uh, both Ben and I love basketball, so I love to refer to myself as the point guard. Uh, and especially there's a lot of uh, action sequences. Heli is literally trying to physically escape. So I get to run down hallways, smash through windows, uh, throw speakers at Adam Scott's head. Uh, I, I, had a, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with the physical aspect of the show. And that's a lot of what Heli has to go off of because she has no memory of who she is again. Um, and she has a real drive to get out at all costs. Now, um, what, you talked about this earlier, John, about bringing Chris Walken in as Bert. Um, I want to ask you, actually, Zach, because I love your character's kind of opinion on um, on Bert's character. Can you talk to me how your character, Dylan, views Bert? Yeah, he kind of just doesn't like his vibe. He gets a he gets a bad vibe off the guy, and <laughs> and he's and he doesn't really change his mind. You know, he kind of sticks with that. He gets a bad gut vibe. Bad gut vibe all around. Now, uh, John, he's just jealous. He's just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that might, that jealous might be he overwhelms him, and uh, that's my my point of view. <laughs> so I was just going to ask you because your character actually has this chance meeting with Bert, which changes your character's whole uh, direction. Can you, without going into spoilers, can you talk about about Bert's relationship with Irving? Well. <laughs> I just think sometimes you meet people and you connect and you, you're like, you know, you're, you're similar souls or something, you know, and, and that's very hard to act. Right. You, I, I watch a lot of things when people are supposed to be in love or this or that, and you just go, I'm not feeling that, you know? So if you have someone who gets your sense of humor and you share certain things, it's easy to, to build up from that and then see what happens between you. So it's not like there are decisions that are made. When you work with someone like Chris, I know I've directed him a bunch of times too. He, you know, he's sort of like a jazz piano player. He comes at it from, you know, from all different angles. And that's kind of the, uh, the joy of working with someone like that. And then you see, there's always a surprise. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, every no, every episode ends in that cliffhanger. And believe me, it's so easy to hit just the next one. And uh, it's just such a great show. And you guys do such a fantastic job in it. I want to thank you guys for your time. Amazing job. I love Severance. Amazing job, guys. Thank, thank you so thank much. You.